Hello again, and welcome to week 11 of year three of the Religious Education Initiative. We're continuing our way through the book of Genesis for the day one readings, uh, and we're in chapter 18. Last time, we saw God come to Abraham and Sarah, and he promised that the long expected, long promised son would be born to them within a year's time. He came, however, together with two angels, and as they left, they went toward Sodom. The Lord, however, remained behind, and he speaks with Abraham, and he tells him what is going to happen there in Sodom. And then he is very patient with Abraham, as we will see. So, this is verse 16 of chapter 18. Then the men set out from there, and they looked toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to set them on their way. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do, seeing that Abraham shall become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? No, for I have chosen him, that he may charge his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice, so that the Lord may bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave is their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, if I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him, Suppose forty are found there. He answered, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, O oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. He answered, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there. And he answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. And the Lord went his way when he had finished speaking to Abraham. And Abraham returned to his place. Now, there's a lot that's interesting in this passage. But first of all, the way that the Lord speaks at the beginning sort of speaking to himself and saying, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am going to do? No, I will not hide from him, because he is going to be a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed in him. No, because I have chosen him so that he can charge his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice. So God says, No, I'm not going to hide this from Abraham, because... The entire point here is that he teach his descendants to be righteous, to keep the way of the Lord. This is interesting. We need to come back to this as we discuss. So, God then says to Abraham, what an outcry there is about Sodom and Gomorrah. He says, everyone is talking about how sinful, how broken, how troubled, how horrible these two cities are. So God says, I have come down to see whether it is indeed as bad as I have heard. Now, of course, this is a manner of speaking. God does not actually need to come down to investigate. He knows full well what is happening. But in coming down, he makes very clear that he has indeed investigated, that he is being fully just. And he makes very clear 
that warning has been given, that opportunity for repentance has been given. Uh, this is not God just smiting uh, ants with a hammer. He comes down to see in person um, and to give a chance. We'll see what that chance is uh, in the next chapter. So Abraham then, his response is very interesting because he, he apparently he doesn't want the city to be destroyed. Maybe he's fine with all of those wicked people being destroyed, but he's worried about the righteous being destroyed with the wicked. And that's his argument to God. And and we might be impressed with the the boldness. We might even say the uh, the audacity that Abraham has to, to speak to God in this way, saying, Far be it from you, the judge of the earth, to be unjust in any way. You know, it's a little bit theatrical. Um, and he talks God down from uh, 50 righteous people being the number necessary to stave off judgment to 10. Uh, he doesn't dare go lower than that. Uh, and at that point, uh, the Lord leaves him. What I think is interesting here is if we read Abraham's argument in light of what God says at the beginning, that the reason... God is even telling Abraham what's going to happen is because Abraham is going to be the father of many nations and he needs to teach his children and all of his descendants need to be taught in what it is to be righteous. Ultimately, God is telling Abraham that the conversation they're having isn't just about Sodom and Gomorrah. It is about the role of the faithful descendants of Abraham in the world that even the world is experiences a postponement of judgment. Even the world is forgiven for the sake of only a very few righteous and faithful people. This is what Abraham's descendants are supposed to be. This is what we who are in the church are supposed to be. And although I don't recall which saint said this, it's been a, a recurring theme in the life of the church where uh, sometimes it might be said that for the sake of three saints, only three righteous and holy people in all the world, uh, judgment is withheld and the world is, is permitted to continue uh, only for three righteous people, three holy and saintly people, but uh, only three. I have to try to find that, uh, that reference if I find it. We'll read it in one of these later uh, selections. But for now, uh, what we should to take note of is, the, the other thing to notice is, Abraham is engaging in the role of an intercessor, even for the wicked. He is praying to God, asking him for mercy, and God is listening to him. Uh, if we ever doubt the efficacy of prayer, if we ever doubt our responsibility to pray, uh, we should look at this and, and, and see how God treats Abraham, how he listens to him. Uh, so as we say, there are layers in this, uh, but we can probably leave it with the, uh, the realities that it is good to pray for, for justice and for mercy both at once. And that those who are righteous, they sustain, in, in, in a very real sense, they sustain the entire creation. So that's all for day one. God bless you all. I'll see you in a couple days for day two.